we are going. This is exciting. Um, I, yay. yay. I am pretty excited to have you on here and have everybody on Facebook. I know we will have delay, so I will kind of keep talking um, here if people have questions as we go or at the end. Um, let me turn my volume down here just, just because. So, everyone, uh, why don't you introduce yourself since I know you're a PT and a horse person and just kind of let people know where you're from and where, a little bit about you, like short synopsis. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, I'm horse. I don't, I don't know how I could get that to there, but I'll do my best. Okay. I'm Farley Schweigert. I am, um, I'm from Arkansas, so I'm a delicate Southern belle. Um, I am a physical therapist. Uh, I have a little practice called Rider's Edge Therapy and Wellness where I um, treat horses and riders. Um, I run barrels, I rope, I break away, I head. Um, I've done a little bit of everything. I've horse showed. Um, I work for the rodeo sports medicine team I've, I've done that for about 10 years um, working with rodeo athletes I've been a therapist for 10 years now and um, really how I got here was uh, my dad's roping injury he had three shoulder surgeries on his roping shoulder in the matter of 10 months oh wow and his physical therapist got him back to rodeo and uh, so that, that's how I got to PT school and how um, <laughs> my crazy journey has um, evolved me to, to where I am now. That's awesome. That's why I ended up being a PT also. So hopefully uh, that was short and sweet enough. Close enough, right? <laughs> uh, I got hurt personally while, while I was in college. I was in, uh, already accepted into vet school, but... Um, the person that actually helped me the most was the PT, right? And um, basically didn't say that I couldn't rope again. And anybody else I talked to said, oh, you just don't need to rope. It's just a hobby. Why, why would you want to do that? And I'm like, because uh, it's my life. <laughs> so, yes, yes um, right? <laughs> um, so I'm excited to have you on here. So the whole, so everybody kind of knows my idea behind this was, is, is, was, um, Everybody, I did a poll and everybody thought, you know, well, what, what do we need to work on the most? And it's the mental piece of it. And the piece that I think that everybody needs the most is accountability. So the whole idea behind this is you and I are going to get together now and then a week from now. And then hopefully we leave here in the end of however long this takes us with one to three things that everybody can do. And then I'm going to do a post every day in the group to kind of do accountability for everybody. Um, I would like to say there's glitzy prizes at the end, guys, but it's really just hard work and you need to do it if you want to get better. <laughs> this is what it is. <laughs> so, um, I kind of wanted to focus on the fact that um, the other piece, so accountability and how beneficial it can be when you work with somebody that knows the ins and outs of the body and what that can bring to the table. because. Um, I watched the other day, um, probably 100 breakaway runs while I was at work. Um, very high use of my time at work. Um, I was here and those big, the horse would come like this and the girl would go and the horse just goes like this, right? And so everybody thinks, oh, it's my left hand or it's the horse or, 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 or. And um, I don't know, I just kind of wanted to get somebody else's perspective on that. And, what can we change in our bodies to make that look different? So that's kind of my thoughts behind it. And I kind of have a few thoughts and I kind of wanted to get your thoughts of what could be changing. What could that look like of why that's happening, I guess. Um, and then I guess the other piece is, is people always come to me and say, I, they're, they're doing the same thing all the time and still getting the same results and they don't understand why it's not working. And I feel like there's lots of things within our bodies that are blocking that, that people have no idea. So <laughs> that's kind of where this is all coming. So I know I'm just kind of talking, <laughs> which I like to do, but um, yeah. So what do you think when a horse, when a person is pushing a horse across 
and they're not lining up to cattle, what could be happening in our body? I know that there's a delay. No. Hello. Um, that last that last little bit got jumbled for me because I live out in the sticks too. But I, I kind of got I got the main point of what what is happening when when we're pushing across I'm there. Pushing across, and, right? and I think a lot of things. <laughs> I, I got, we can do hand signals to deal with the, the bad Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, like this. We want this and we get this. And this is how I look this weekend. Like this. <laughs> now I tell you, you had a very successful weekend. I'm going to tell you what I look like this weekend. <laughs> I had a very, very successful weekend. I'm so, so excited. And I have struggled so hard with this and she did so good with me doing this yes her body straight right <laughs> we've worked really really hard <laughs> oh, and i got a new dog that he adopted mm -hmm. us and he sings like a skunk <laughs> yay <laughs> and she doesn't like Has my dog talking <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag real life. Right? Oh no. Yes. <laughs> so, um, from yes, no, congratulations on your big win this week. Oh, thank you. Um, so I think I think a lot of things can happen there. Um, I know where you want to go with this with stability in the hips and the core and stuff. Um and and what I think it was neat about this conversation tonight is that you and I are in different parts of our roping journey right now um, because I, um, uh, I'm just now getting back to the rope pin, been running barrels for a long time and, and um, riding. And so I'm, I'm headed to a clinic next weekend with Joe. And so I'm very excited about that. Um, so all this That's has awesome. been going through my brain, right, as I'm, I'm coming back to it. So, um, so I, yeah, so it, I, I was driving home today and I was like, oh, this could be a fun conversation because we're, we're at different levels and, and we can bring all the people with us together. Right. Um, a, a rising tide will, will bring all the boats. Up. So, um, so back to your question of, of this, um, if it's not, um, I, sometimes I think I, obviously it's, it's your left hand because our left hand um, has to operate independently from our right hand. Um, and you've got to have that um, position on your reins correct enough that you're, it's not changing your upper body. Um, but I think particularly a lot of times when that happens coming out there, we're looking at a weakness in the core and a weakness in the pelvis. Um, and I, and I come from that, perspective right now because um i um am having to strengthen my core um to a different level that um <laughs> that i haven't had to with riding i've been riding poles for the last three years and not doing a whole lot of competition um and everybody's like well you're strong you always do this the la 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 like all, all the people who are helping me and that's not and i'm like that's great but obviously this is not working right now. Um, mm -hmm. So I feel like if you, um, a couple things are happening. Um, I feel like you really got to use your groin muscles, your inside muscles. Um, we call them the adductors. If we're talking more um, medical speak to um, get up and, and get and take that first hit out of the box. I talk a lot about that and I've studied a lot of that with um, watching my dad and growing up in the rope pen. But if you don't, if you don't come in that first hit when you nod your face and leave, then you get behind here. And if you're mm -hmm. behind here, then you're rushing to get here and not get in your position because the only way to rope fast is to get in the position faster. And so then you, you're kind of cutting off and going along that way. Additionally, the pelvis and the core are very tricky business, right? Um, and 
the human body will find a reason, will find a way to get the job done, and it may not be the correct way. And when that gets programmed in your body, that is hell to get changed when it's not working right. When those neuromuscular tracks get all done up, it is, it's hard, hard to get that redone. I talk with my hands. <laughs> no, so my question back to you then, do you think that it, for you, is that the difference from you've been going slow with cults and slow work and things like now, and now you're expecting your body to up the game and maybe those tracks weren't just perfect now and it's like, oh, you're having to retrain everything. Oh, absolutely. Cause like for me personally, I, um, I, I will, um, externally rotate my, my legs. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm using more of my medial hamstring when I'm riding and this is just kind of general riding, not even getting to the rope pin. And so it still looks correct. Right. Um, cause my legs still in the line and everything, but I don't have, um, I'm not using the inside muscles, my groin muscles as much. So that pattern has been ingrained differently. And now we're asking to get up and get that pelvic bone to the saddle horn, right? Mm -hmm. and not coming up, but going forward and yes. taking that hit. And so it's a retraining that's having to happen from, from me doing the whole, um, what I kind of, this bad habit that I got years ago that even affects my barrel racing. Um, but um, dang sure not, <laughs> ain't not working whatsoever <laughs> in a retraining. And it's not even, and I even, like, I completely know that. It's and it's hard. not, and I don't try to sit that way. I just noticed that. Um, I did, yeah, and I just noticed that the firing of the groin muscles and the getting forward and the pushing down through my toes is not, it's a simple concept, but it's just not how my body is working right now. And so it's, it's taking longer. So I kind of deviated, I kind of deviated off of this path to just kind of <laughs> went over no, here. It, but it's so true, right? Because um, that, that's, um, for me, it was injury, right? Major concussion, a TBI type of stuff. And that I fought with for over 25 years now, but, um, or pain, right? That then cause pain. But anytime you have anything, those habits are hard to break. Cause even though we know it, the back part of our brain that needs to do the work is uh 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 safety first. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just um not only is it the safety first, but it is that um I got the job done for you. Like, what, what do you expect, right? Like, I, I got the job done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Never mind that you were in the 10D. You, I did what you asked me to do. <laughs> I, I know they don't have 10D ropings yet, but that's what I say about my barrel horses. <laughs> right? You did every step. It just wasn't very fast. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> So, yeah, so it's, um, you, so yeah, I think, um, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, so when you, so how do you help that problem, right? Or how do you, A, speed up the process, right? Or make sure you have the steps right. I mean, that's always the question. That's, I mean, and I think it's so that and I know it's so so individual for every every person it is so individual and I, and I think that's what's great about everything is that a lot of people talk about the correct steps and we talk about it different ways it doesn't matter whether you're training horses or doing PT or putting on a clinic and so something somebody says is going to connect with somebody and just turn some light bulbs on so that's what's so cool about having these conversations mm -hmm, for sure um uh, for me it's it's a couple of things right it is um 
it is some core strength um that's easy that's easy right because obviously if it was easy we'd have this done a lot it's it's easy to get out of bed at 5 30 and go do some exercise before you clean stalls and feed and then go to work right that not a whole lot of people ever <laughs> But it's also, it's even more than that, Jennifer, and it's deeper than that in uh, neuromuscular retraining. So like, um, we did a lot of sled work yesterday. We did some stationary sled work um, with my horse right there, but then I even got off my horse and they're like, okay, okay, stand there, widen your base of support and just stand there and rope. Don't take a step. Don't lean um because within all so my my other competition pattern is to lean at the at the hips mm -hmm. instead of bringing that pelvis up to the saddle horn mm -hmm. and and another common mistake riders and ropers make and and while i'm talking about my journey back into the rope pen i've been there before we're just we're a seven year hiatus coming back to it um is uh people try to they say okay you've got to stand up well it's not a standing up it's a standing it's a leaning forward but with with the good posture not mm -hmm. here with, with putting that pelvic bone on the saddle horn so so yesterday it's a neuromuscular retraining of standing there and roping the dummy without taking the step and without doing this Mm -hmm. And it was like, and, and it's funny and, and you'll know the whole feeling too, when you go to a different neuromuscular pattern and you force your body to do that and your nervous system says, whoa, <laughs> wait a minute. That was weird. <laughs> right. For sure. What happened? I had, it was weird and I had to think. I don't like either one of those things. <laughs> and you might miss because you were touching before. Right, right. And when you don't have a when you don't have a trusted mentor, um, cheerleader, coach, somebody you trust to tell you the truth and that can actually is knowledgeable to help you. Because uh, we could all get in this trap where we rope by ourselves. Well, I I know what my rope sounds right like when it's right. I know what curl looks like when it comes back around and it curls around. I know how that feel is, and I can get that on the ground. But it's it's a process of I'm making this neuromuscular pattern of my my hands. I'm leaning and my hands too close to my face instead of out here and up, so that tip comes down. And so there's a, there's a lot of changing that has to happen. Right. I, I find it's really hard and I think it's super interesting how what I, when I see it, yeah, I can tell it in my body and I can tell the steps I've did, but it's so, so interesting. If I go to a two day, put on a two day clinic, you go and you are talking and you're, you know, and like, I remember this one kiddo last year and he was trying, I mean, it was not, and then he slept on it. Right. And we know the benefits of sleep, right? He was able to take that information, have a good sleep, put it into long-term memory. And then the next day he was able to bring it back. And oh my God, it was just like the light bulb clicked. I mean, it's just because he put good patterns. It looked terrible, <laughs> but he was okay with that, thankfully. Um, and he was a not like nine-year-old kid. And thankfully he went along with, I kept telling him it's okay. It's, his mom was telling him it's okay. And then the next day, it clicked, right? I mean, I just think it's so, so important to put those good, good foundations into our brain. Oh, absolutely. And, and I um, worked real hard on my barrel racing and have a real good mentor. And I can, I can feel that feel and that pattern coming on and it can take two or three times to adjust a pattern and it's not a big deal for me. Right. And then, then, and we get that right. We move on to the next scene. We get a good night's sleep. We don't miss a beat the next day. And that's that's coming on in the rope pin. And I can feel it because um, my my blog post that'll go up is is about that whole. It's just like when you're working with a cult, right? You keep showing them, showing them. They kind of do it right, 
right. They kind of do it right. The light bulb clicks and it goes right. And then we kind of do it right. And we kind of weevil wobble until that pattern. All. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of ish that happens from when you nod your face to when the <laughs> rope breaks off and it happens really fast and right and, and it all happens right in front of you right mm -hmm. and so finding that new feel and that new pattern um it's coming it's coming i can feel i can feel those patterns changing but does it happen as rapidly as other things that i've worked on in past years yet but it's coming which is why i've kind of timed um, getting some other help next weekend, working through some stuff that I know I can work through before um, going to see somebody else to try to elevate those those skills and um, get new habits formed. Um, yep. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it, and along with getting the sleep, like you just said, um, there's a lot of research going on right now about sleep and how important it is. And we're talking about it across the healthcare spectrum. Um, and it's just as important in sports and performance. It's huge, right? Um, five to seven hours is what I'm reading as a minimum. And it, that's for, you know, if not more, um, for the, like the younger kids I work with, um, but not being in that REM sleep and not being able to transfer those motor thing, those motor patterns to long-term memory. And then it just gets jumbled. And then not only do you have a clean, you don't, you don't get that pattern there, but everything's jumbled and it's not, nobody took the bath water out and it's just gross. Right. And you're trying to put new information in it. So yes. I just think it's huge. Um, sleep is huge. And I think it's under, I, I met a Oh, Wi-Fi is awesome in the sticks. <laughs> Maybe one day Rural America will have Wi-Fi like everybody else. Right. <laughs> I met, what I was saying, Jennifer, is that I met a guy who's really studied sleep and, and, and I learned a lot from him this fall. And he was talking about, um, of course, in kids that, that sleep, they need more sleep. We know that. But, you know, the importance of getting through four, at least four cycles. Um, cause the, the first two cycles of sleep are really where all the repair and the deep sleep happens. Um, and that happens for people at different hours, um, those deep cycles, but they typically happen in the first two to three cycles in a night. Um, and he explained a lot of things, but one of the biggest takeaways I came from that is if you don't get to those, those deeper levels of sleep within that cycle, that's where um, your brain, your brain gets repaired and um, it sends cerebral spinal fluid through there to wash all the trash out that gets produced in a day. Um, uh, we're not talking about what you walk, watch on Facebook, but the actual metabolic issues that happen. And, and that's, what helps keep your brain healthy and gets them it to repair and all these uh, performance things that we're talking about to really set in. Right. I think we could talk about sleep and how to sleep hygiene. I mean, for hours, <laughs> we could have a whole nother conversation about that, which I think is probably needed to. I noticed for myself um, when I have been able due to poor, my, my stomach got really bad and I poor, had poor gut health, issues for the last three years due to anxiety and so therefore the serotonin that was needed to help me get into sleep what it wasn't producing the serotonin that i needed to be able to sleep so i mean it's just it just comes it's all together <laughs> um mm -hmm. absolutely yeah so um what is one thing, so we're going to make the assumption that, so what's one thing that we could work on? I can either say it two ways, either to be able to independently right and left hand, like you said, to be able to keep our left hand here, not to do this, or something so that we can get those internal muscles of our legs to more fire that the group can work on for the next week. How do you suggest working on that? So. Um... 
Okay, so I'll give you one for each. Um, so one one thing that I've started working on a couple mornings ago um, within my shoulder work that I was doing on my right shoulder, I use a, a shoulder sphere um, and then, you know, just some hand weights and stuff. But I would do something else with my left hand while I was oh, So you're doing this on. and this hand was doing I mean, they're doing, yes. Yeah, so I'm I'm doing I'm working on my scapular stabilizers, or I'm working on um, some neuromuscular control while my left hand. I, I mean, it was as simple as my Aussie decided to help that she was going to be my exercise assistant that I would pet on her mm -hmm. while I was concentrating on doing whatever motion that I was working on. So. Um, just trying to break those patterns up um, while sitting on a Swiss ball. So then there's still a lot of stimulation going on and there's a lot of different moving parts that your nervous system's having to assimilate. Awesome. Uh, so just, just a simple break in the pattern, right? Mm -hmm. um, because we're, we're all, we, we're all right here in front of us, but we're breaking the pattern and the right hand's doing something and the left hand's doing something. Cause if we don't get that left hand, um, and using the steering wheel or using the brake when we need to, um, it, it will affect what happens here in the right hand. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's something everybody can work on. They can kind of make that their own and um, how that's going to work best for them. Yes. Okay. And then something uh, for those, then, those muscles. <laughs> yes. So one of my favorite exercises, and I, I did this um, when I um, had my good barrel horses, is I took, um, you can take a ball or a pillow. I have one of those um, Pilates circle things mm -hmm. um, that you can squeeze in between your knees. So um, just trying to squeeze in between my knees. Um, and I can probably, uh, I'll shoot a video I, tomorrow and I can post it in the group for you. Oh, okay, that'd be good. Um, if you want me to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love those Pilates circle things. Yeah, and so take one of those, because it's a little bit wider, a pillow will still work, but squeeze that, lay on your back, squeeze that, bring your knees up to a 90 degree angle, mm -hmm. and then just rotate. Oh. So then we're working on, so we're working on that kinetic chain of your groin muscles with your obliques, Mm -hmm. because those have to work opposite of each other that chain has to work that way and that way um, and that will help not only strengthen but be kind of a neuromuscular control exercise to mm -hmm. where we're we're waking waking that diagonal chain up um, you can see it a lot when you're running barrels on having to to come around and your body to come around that turn. But it's the same thing when you're leaving the box because you're trying to get your shoulder right. You know, you're back here or whatever. Well, that, those adductors, those groin muscles and that oblique have to, um, they're still having to come across. And like we talked about where this conversation first started was going here. Mm -hmm. You're not doing a full, like full turn, but you're still having to, to, get across here because um no matter if we um exercise people in one plane life does not happen straight in front of us it happens at a diagonal um <laughs> and all the way around all the time oh i think that's awesome because we we have to do that and then we have to pull back off enough because if we keep our right leg or right foot into them that's i think what lots of times what causes them to go left um as we throw and i think it takes away a lot of shots that people don't even realize they're taken away from them um because what i tell the people i work well, with and, we, and that if we, you can see the same shot every are, time then you're going to have a higher consistency of catching absolutely and people are asymmetrical we tend to be stronger on our dominant side um and so we're typically right-handed and if we're not right-handed we've at least learned how to rope right-handed often times and so that asymmetry can do exactly what you're saying you're putting too much leg on that horse um, from the right side and shoving them across there 
absolutely. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So that's two things for everybody to work on this week. So you guys can have some accountability. I'm gonna check the group real quick to see what they have to say, um, or if they had a question. Nope, I don't think so, not that I saw. Perfect. What else do we have to cover? Do you have any other thoughts for tonight? Um, that, that's what's kind of been rolling around on my head because of what's been happening in the rope pen for me. Um, you know, we can, um, we can talk in later conversations about balancing from the groin muscles out to the abductors um, with the glute meat and the TFL and that kind of stuff. But I think, um, uh, I know for me, um, I, I really like where you're going with this approach of let's keep it simple and, mm -hmm. um, and work on a few things and get that going and then add more so that people don't get overwhelmed um, with what's going on because it still needs to be um, fun, enjoyable while working towards your goal. Right, that's so true. So um, I appreciate coming on here and everybody can have a couple things to do. Um, like I said at the beginning, where I will post every day a, um, like a post in the group the day. And if you guys can then post like that you did it, or if you have questions or pictures, pictures are awesome, um, or video, um, and you'll share the video of um, the, with the Pilates circle. Um, but like she, like she said, just Absolutely. do not wait. You can order a Pilates cir circle on Amazon, super cheap, but, and I can share a link for it, but, do not wait for the Pilates circle. It's not gonna be the make or break deal. <laughs> uh, I had somebody the other day, oh, I'm gonna wait to order a rope. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get a $5 rope out of the, the used ropes. So just do something. <laughs> it's better than nothing. We get caught up in the, well, it needs to be perfect before I do that, you know, and, and that, I think that happens a lot um, for women. And, and a lot of, and, it's, and I think that's um, something that's gonna, that particularly in this event, it's gonna be a lot of overcoming because you have a lot of people who um, are like me or in similar situations that maybe stepped away from the event um, for a long time, whether it's family obligations, adulting, life, horses, the list goes on and they're coming back around and, and that can be intimidating. <laughs> um, but just, just start somewhere um, with, you know, do the best you can with what you have right now um, to start moving the needle forward. That's awesome. Yes. I love that. Just do the best you can with what you have. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And thank you for everybody that joins us on Facebook and then I'll share this on YouTube and we will start tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Bye. Awesome. Thank you.